So just refreshing your memories. So it looks like if you intersect only once, no matter with which vertical line this happens, this is a function. But if you find two points of intersection, like with this parabola that opens to the right, looks like, then it's not a function. So functions are not functions. The key idea is just take this equation and call it as a function by naming it with something like uh, g of x or f of x. And uh, then this will enable you to plug numbers in, even though you could plug numbers in without calling it as f of x or g of x, but well, they recommend to do this for functions so you can replace like an example five instead of letter x you have in the parentheses two fifths so you're gonna plug it in the two places instead of x so this is gonna be two fifths squared and then minus two times two fifths and then you end up working with some fractions and you produce some answer so the idea is to use functions to replace variable x with what's in the parentheses. So that's how we work with functions. So let me look at some of the exercises here at the end. So they actually we always look at the problems that called practice exercises. So we don't want a vocabulary or other parts, right? And then they wanted to plug some numbers into various various equations of functions or not functions. Like here, you can see, like problem 29, they say that we don't have function because of a vertical line test, right? We saw that exercise last time. And we do have functions like in problem number 30 and 31 because we cannot find the vertical line that will intersect our intersect our function more than once. So these things are good to be aware of. And of course, we also talked about so-called domain and the range of our function. So x coordinates give us domain and y coordinates give us range. So for example, when I'm looking at problem number 63 here, then we can see that for equation f of x is equal to one over x plus five, we need to be careful with its denominator because we don't divide by zero. So when we are talking about the mean for this function and wonder what values of x are no good, well, that x plus five is not zero. So x is not equal to negative number five. Let me see why this is no good. Well, try to put instead of letter x, negative number five into your function. So I take this equation and replace x with a number negative five. So this ends up being one divided by zero, which is not allowed for us to calculate and I say why not well let me get a calculator and try to calculate and see that this is not going to work we don't divide by zero so they just did I just typed scientific calculator in a google search and they usually use the first one not the one that provided by google but that Desmos choice so if I click on it then you can enter one divided by zero in it and see the answer is undefined so we don't divide by zero that's what undefined 
stands for. So we just want to make sure that there is no zero in denominator. And that's why when we're looking for the domain of our function, I always watch out when I see the denominator because we don't divide by zero. What does this mean? How can I write the answer? You can see they actually say here something with a union sign in between. Well, they wrote the same thing differently. They made sure that minus five is out of a real number line. So they take everything to the right and everything to the left from minus five. And that's just the other way to describe that minus five is out. So they say from minus five to the left and left infinite, so to minus infinity, it's negative direction. Or for the other interval, it's from minus five to the right, which is to positive infinity. And they unite this, they take like a U-shaped symbol called union. So I just wrote the same thing basically three times. So one time is x is not equal to minus five. The other time was a picture and the third time was this way the textbook placed it. Well, the textbook likes so-called interval notation. So use this intervals from minus infinity to minus five and union. So that's intervals. There is a number line notation. That's the other way to write the same thing is just to picture it so everyone can see what's going on. And the third way is just to say with inequality not equal to minus five, that's so-called inequality notation to write the same thing. So when you have denominator, then there is a problem with domain. So you want to make sure that that number is not present in your answer. I say, what if I don't have denominator, Alex? Like in exercise 61. Well, then for the main, you take all real numbers. For the main in exercise number 61, you take all real numbers, which means all numbers on the number line. We call it as a real number line. So I say all real, so all real numbers. So you take x axis entirely, if you talk about picture. And the way to write this with inequality will be here from minus infinity to plus infinity. All everything from left to right on number line. Again, because you didn't have denominator, because denominator gives us a problem usually. And if you don't have denominator, well then nothing to worry about in terms of the mean. So the idea of the mean is to help you graph various functions. And uh, you can see here in the section, they again start <clears throat> talking about graphing linear functions. So instead of calling this as y is equal to 2x minus 1, they decided to replace f of x, right? You see the differences above it's f of x. But it's the same thing. They just trying to stress again, so this is a function. That's why they basically do the same thing. They graphing it again. So I guess that's pretty much all this section contains word functions and their domains. And now we will use word functions a lot. From now on, we'll be dealing with functions and uh, section 2.5 continues dealing with functions. It's called graphing the other functions, others besides lines, besides those linear functions. So what other functions they have here for us? Well, here's another favorite function. It's a parabola. Y is equal to X squared. I hope this graph is somewhat familiar to some people. It's a so-called U-shaped curve symmetric through y-axis. And they just try to justify that 
parabola looks like that. And they just calculated various points and then they plot them and then they connected them with this parabola curve. So parabola, that's a very popular graph. We will work with it a lot in the math classes. From now on, you will see parabolas very often. Here's another very popular graph, a so-called cubic parabola, x cube. You can see how they graphed it. It looks analogous to the parabola I started with above. And then they continue this down because they show that negative values of x give you negative values when you cube them. So cubic parabola is here. And they also give you another function, so-called absolute value function. When you say, Alex, there's too many functions. Yes, they just uh, showing you so-called library of functions. Those functions that are very popular and uh, one like parabola or cubic parabola or this one, absolute value function, are very good to know because you will see them every once in a while in our class as well as in the next class. So here's the absolute value function. It looks like the check mark. So we have one here. So what I can do is practice graphing in this section various, various functions. So they start to play with these graphs here by moving these graphs around. So what does that mean? Well, they actually consider parabola here x squared, and you can see they move the graph to the right and to the left. So that red picture was moved to the right direction, and they changed the equation a little bit. So what they're done is they graph here y is equal to x minus 3 squared in the parentheses. And I say that's f of x. Yeah, you can write it as f of x. It's the same thing. And this is attained by, achieved by uh, placing the slowest point of parabola at three. So if I look at corresponding graph of x squared, that had its lowest point at the origin at point zero, now the lowest point went three places to the right because I subtracted three from x variable. And that's what happens with any function. If you subtract some number from x inside the parentheses, the parabola or whatever other graph will be moved three units to the right. And that's a very interesting observation. That may be a surprise to some people because they say you subtract. You should probably take it to the left, not to the right. But I have to move this point to the right direction. The whole graph goes three units to the right. Well, intuitively, to explain it, we can say if you look at what's in the parentheses, that's what we do first, right? Order of operations says, do first operation inside the parentheses, inside, inside the grouping symbols. Take your x and subtract three from it. So when I do this, the x coordinate will be three smaller. So the whole picture will return back where the original x squared parabola is supposed to be. So subtracting three, every point you move three units 
to the left is subtracted from your x coordinates along the x axis. So that could be an explanation. So let me take a look at some of the exercises here at the end of the section and try to get the ideas. So again, I go to this practice exercises and try to start with exercise like number 38 here that says, Alex, you have a graph of function, which is y equals to x plus 4 squared. And this graph now is again parabola because we have a squared here, right? But it's moved by four units to the left. So this whole graph is going to be sitting at point negative four because we added four. So it's just the opposite to what one may feel since you add four, then you bring the graph four units to the left because then you're going to have to start out with parentheses increase your x by four, so you kind of return back your parabola in the beginning to the origin. So that's what happens when you add or subtract from x inside the parentheses. So if you have parentheses and you add something inside the parentheses, then this is what's going to happen. Well, those are transformations to the left and to the right. Notice that the graph in exercise number 27 is actually moved down by three units. So the parabola is actually sitting at point negative three here. And the reason is, here we subtracted three from the whole thing, from entire x squared. You see the difference with the previous example, which is right there, where you subtract three from x inside the parentheses. That's different compared to subtracting three from x squared. So that's not the same, so actually, bring the graph down. Analogously, in the problem 28, if you happen to add two to entire x squared, that graph goes two units up. So if you move parabola up, you add. If you move parabola down, then you subtract. So using this idea, can you tell me what will happen if you have a graph uh, equation of x squared plus four? So it's not like in 38 where it was in the parentheses. Now it's gonna be moved up or down, right? So, Let's have a little quiz. Can you please tell me if this graph is going to be moved up or down if you compare it with the original x squared parabola if you add 4? So all you can tell me is just up or you can tell me down in a Zoom chat. And the advice is look at the problems number 27 and 28. And when you put your answer in the chat, please make sure you don't send it to the whole class. Just uh, select my name. Just send it only to Alex. Please don't worry on this. Just send it only to me. And that's our quiz for today.
So on Wednesday, I will stop by in the classroom in the case if somebody still wants to get any help with how to take quizzes or with textbook or with anything else. I will be on Wednesday, so next class me in the classroom so we can discuss if anything you'd like me to discuss with you. But you can also be on Zoom, that's your choice. <laughs>